Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Yes, please. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and, and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Oh, I could just cry. Hello, sir. Sorry, I just need to do a quick search if you want to get through. Just routine. Yeah, it feels good, huh? Yeah, I bet it does there, cue ball. Thank you for your cooperation. Please continue. Mr. Wynn. Ma, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madam's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case... concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room. To my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this.
Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample. of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellington's Last night, not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Sir. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings... ...indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Be of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler.
I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, uh, uh, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office.
coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. How are things coming along inside? Is everything... Ready for tomorrow? Fake funeral tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. It's such a big responsibility having a baby. I have to protect it, right? How do you even do that? I can't do that. Amy is a great lass. You love her, she loves you. And now a wee one on the way. I'd say you're one lucky bastard. Did Alice tell you what Emma did when she arrived? Tell me. She turned up and demanded to be put up in Madame Carlyle's bedroom. We're the new heads of the family after all. It is only fitting, she said. Well, Gregory would have stopped her, which was a surprise. He normally accepts his wife's outrageous behavior without batting an eyelid. But staying in his mother's bed so soon was just a bit steep, I suppose. She can't wait to get her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Mary is so upset, as she's never seen a dead body before. Life can be tough sometimes. And that detective asked to come here. Madame Carlyle must believe Zachary was murdered. Why else ask him to snoop around? I feel weak in my knees from all the tension here. Don't worry, I'm sure everything will settle down. Rather than by words and meaningless gestures. Like hugs and encouragement. Just a single spontaneous caress, what a difference that would have made. Right. I clearly remember when I was five. I climbed a tree and could not make my way down. I was scared and called out for help. Of all people, you heard me, and when you saw me, you climbed a tree. I was relieved that help had finally arrived. But you went down immediately and said, when a grown-up can do it, so can you, Edward. You are five, and climbing trees is supposed to be your area of expertise. Oh, no, that won't go. You'll just think I remember this because I'm weak. So, Madame Carlyle wants a picture taken. If you were to assist with the missing fuse, I'm sure the portrait would be one for the ages. She expects the family photos to be on any moment now. Mine? It is shoot to happen, okay? And I need it to be perfect. Can't we just take a picture right now? Oh, I, I guess we could do that. I'll finish that up. Is that the just 
Rosie thinks she's in love with young Patrick. I mean, that's a breaking heart happening if I ever saw one. A safe in Madame Carla's office. I bet. That's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. Identify yourself. Stay here. Okay, yeah, got it. Speechless. I mean, why does this always happen to me? I need to stop thinking about Emma all the time. attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. I get a headache from all the decisions. I mean... Pram or stroller, comforter or not, should I ask her to marry me? What if she says no? And then this big funeral thing tomorrow.
Painkillers. Lethal if you use enough of them. But... Not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? So, how long have you been working here? About a month now. You're American. What on earth are you doing in this shithole? A girl like you belongs in clubs in London. I bet you're a great dancer. I don't like dancing. What about restaurants? You like food? I know some great places. You should come to the Jarrah Bay. We're really nice. Bucks. A girl like you deserves that. I don't know. All of you, you could be a model, you know. Right. I'm serious. I have a friend who's a model. She says that's the sweet, sweet life. You should come and stay at my place in London. You can have a come over. Give me some tips. I'm quite happy here, thanks.
Tracy, for God's sake, Ella. But why don't we get any kind of explanation? It's bloody rude, that's what it is. Making us come here to play funeral and then show up like nothing. Rebecca Carla. A bit strange. Can you tell me about yesterday evening? I mean, we don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. Charge anymore. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? How are you? Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know?
Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much.
think of something interesting to say during the shoot to grab Rebecca's attention. I had plenty to offer her comfort, but it doesn't matter if Carlisle is a thing after all. But I, I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but what happens is now. Why waste away in front of the books when he can play like that? That music makes my heart soar. You have a way with words, Stan. Yes, hi, Cassie. It's me again. Edward. I, I know I'm not supposed to leave you messages, and this is the last time, I promise. It's just... Uh, I don't know how to handle this whole situation. I, I don't think I can really. I, I can't feel my legs, and my eyes are not working properly. This flicker thing again. Y you can't tell anyone. But well, the thing is, I've been asked before... On ...the eulogy at the funeral event tomorrow. I know it all sounds so unbelievable. But even though Mother is still alive, we still have to go through with the funeral. I have to write the eulogy. I don't think I can. She will definitely want to read it, and no matter what. I, I, I just know she'll be disappointed in me. Again. My legs are really weird. I, I need you, Cassie. I'm sorry, I, I know. I'll hang up. Not supposed to do this. Christ, sorry. Bye. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. If that's all, I... I have a speech to write? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, Mother, and the staff were all the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me.
Yes. Long, due diligence, and almost unnatural ability to prove it. Remember. Phil, did you find out if the vote was notarized? But how the hell did that happen? No, nope. we all signed it. I gave it to him in person. He says he got it notarized the very same day. Right, listen. You go to their office and ask for Cheryl. She's the best they've got. Tell her you want to see the records. Don't take no for an answer. And call me as soon as you've got them. Thanks, Phil. We'll get to the bottom of this. Token to Madame Carlyle's daughter. Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her, that sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler? Oh, of course.
How's everything coming along, Helene? Very well, Mr. Fernsby. Make sure you focus on your work. I will. I don't need one more maid crying in the kitchen. So watch yourself around young Mr. Patrick. Don't worry about me. Groceries arrive. We heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But all that is safe with Ethel. She never misses a step, gossiping and work both. I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. I know I have to, but Amy thinks she might be pregnant. I'm gonna be a dad. You'll be fine, Robbie. Kids are great. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. He's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. Except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Too right she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. How are things coming along inside? Is everything ready for tomorrow? Fight funeral tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs. The day death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. It's such a big responsibility. Hi there. Can't you just relax for a minute? And that solicitor upstairs, why do you think he's here? I think solicitors are mother's favorite kind of people. Can't remember ever having a family event without one tucked away in a room somewhere. Due diligence always trumped the family. I think he's here to cut us from her will. Very ridiculous. Imagine the scandal if the firstborn son didn't pick up the torch. That would never happen. Did you talk to mother? I haven't had the pleasure of. She just clams up when I try to get an explanation. Not even an apology. I mean, <laughs> believing our mother dead is not exactly how I'd like to spend the week. And then she shows up like that. I nearly shat myself. <laughs> I mean, she really topped her usual icy self this time. Well, I don't know why you're so upset. Do you realize how much I've had to deal with because of her sudden death? No, oh, of course you don't. Never done an honest day's work in your life. Obviously, it's all a major cock. The first I've ever seen was the first 
Finally, something amusing happened to me. Thought for That door leads to Emma and Gr Later. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing?
Now this is interesting, Forty. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. <laughs> 